Hello everybody, Levi Clay here and I'm back again to do another question and answer video. I'm going to start the video by saying please do head down to the section below and hit that like button because it really helps these videos out. This video comes to you via a question from a chap by the name of Rodolfo Amaro. As always, your channel has intelligent discussions. I know this is not about the topic of this video, but I would like to see a video with your opinion about the pros and cons of the EADGCF tuning. Your opinion is very relevant because you've transcribed tons of materials in standard. Cool. Great question. Um, yes, so for those unfamiliar with EADGCF tuning, what that is is all fourths, consistent fourths. Those of you that have practiced the guitar, played the guitar long enough, will know that there is actually a, a third tuning on the guitar between the G and the B string. It's the reason when you tune um, to tune to open strings, you tune your uh, A string so it's in tune with the 5th fret of your E string. Your D string is to the 5th fret of the A string. Your G string is to the 5th fret of the D string and your B string is to the 4th fret of the G string. There's a third, you're tuned to a third there. Um, whereas there are other players that now tune uh, in consistent fourths, all fourths across the neck. Guys like Tom Quayle obviously made this very popular, but there are definitely other guys that use this tuning. Ant Law is another great player that uses this tuning. He actually tunes down a semitone, but the concept is still there, the idea of being tuned in all fourths. And I have transcribed plenty of materials, both in standard tuning and in fourths tuning, uh, because I obviously work with Tom on a lot of uh, his projects and Lick Library stuff and Guitar inter Interactive stuff. And I've also transcribed stuff for Ant Law. Anyway, so my thoughts on the tuning, um, I don't want to say are well-known, but I, I've been vocal about this. I don't want to say that it's rubbish. I don't want to say that it's a waste of time because I don't really feel that way. I think that it's something that has a use and it has a use if you are a very specific type of player. Um, and I am not that player, I should be clear. It has very little relevance to me for what I do. Uh, because of the player I am, but for someone like Tom Quayle, who is primarily an improvising jazz musician, it's of wonderful use to someone like that, because it adds a degree of uh, symmetry and consistency throughout the neck. You find that because everything is tuned in fourths, all of your chord voicings are going to be exactly the same. I'll grab a guitar. I'm not in fourths tuning on this guitar, but if you play uh, a major seven chord voicing... In force, you can literally just move that exact same voicing to anywhere, and you're going to have a major seven chord voicing. Okay, and from that, anytime you play any scale fingering, so it will be exactly the same no matter where you start. Now, it doesn't work for me because I'm not in force, but if I were to play that same fingering you would still have a major scale. Everything would be consistent. This is useful for things like arpeggios. You'd be able to do that and everything would be consistent. So there's a degree of consistency, but the problem with fourths tuning, and this is a huge problem and it's a massive deal breaker for me, is you cannot, in fourths tuning, you cannot do this. You cannot play an E major chord. You cannot play You can't play bar chords when I'm doing. You get the idea. Um, you can't do that sort of stuff when you're in force tuning because the tuning doesn't allow for it. The thing I think is important to remember is that standard tuning is not something that was arbitrarily decided upon. Many people over the years, and we're talking hundreds of years ago, used different tunings. The reason standard tuning came about as being popular, the reason standard tuning became the one that people wanted to use, was because of this idea that you can play chord voicings in it 
easily. Now, don't get me wrong, in EADGCF, it doesn't mean that you can't play chord voicings, but the chord voicings that are are common practice, the common chord voicings, the ones that other players will be using, the ones that you will be required to play if you're playing music other than your own music, some of them become literally impossible to play. And that's problematic if you play in a covers band or things like that. Now, of course, there are always workarounds. You can work around these ideas, but working around is not ideal when you can just play what's what's required of you. Um, the other thing to take into consideration is I know it's caused problems for Tom, massive problems. I, I guess it would depend on who you're working for. Uh, Lick Library seem to be less uptight about it. Uh, I would be more uptight about it. As an instructor, it can be very confusing for Tom's students, and he constantly has to make a point on every single video that he does that he tunes differently and listen with your ears, not with your eyes, etc. Um, it can be very, very confusing for people to have to watch Tom play and copy him when they're not playing in his tuning and likewise on the odd time where tom has had to be in standard tuning in order to teach i.e when he did his steely dan dvd for lick library the issues that come with that is this disconnect in the brain of when you put your finger down on the the b string he's expecting a note to sound based on the tuning he's used to but that note doesn't sound so it's disorientating for him so in order to not be disorientating for students of yours you may have to disorient yourself and again that's not ideal it doesn't mean that you can't learn to play in both tunings because well i can play pretty proficiently in open e tuning um i'm yeah relatively okay in open e and if you think of modern acoustic guitar players they play in lots of open tunings and they're comfortable in all of them so it's something that i guess you can adapt to but for me the reason i stay away from the force tuning is because it's not something i've needed i learned to play the guitar very <laughs> i learned to play the guitar very well shall we say um but i don't mean that what i mean is i spent 10 plus years playing the guitar before i even encountered uh, fourth tuning before it even occurred to me and by that point everything that I played on the guitar was so automatic I didn't have to think about um, these the, the inconsistency of the B string none of that mattered to me Tom's basic principle is very simple Tom's principle is when you put your first finger down you should be able to know every interval that's around it when you put your second finger down you should know everything that's around it and when you put your fourth finger down you should know all of the intervals that fall around it and then, no matter where you transfer that information to, if I do it on the G string, all of that information will be the same. If I do it on the uh, B string, the information's the same. Little finger on the A string, all that information is going to be transferable. For me, I have a similar system in place, um, and it's based in the cage system. I can do all of that, but rather than having these one, two, three shapes, that I have uh, an octave covered and then that octave can be moved anywhere. I have five shapes and no matter where I play no matter where I play I have that intervallic understanding so if you find me going There's the flat seven to the third root down to the six. Chromatic, the flat five, the second, fourth, fat third to the third to the root, end on the seven, slide up to the root. So no matter what I do, I'm always thinking of those intervals anyway. So what I'm saying is no matter what you choose to do, as long as you are consistent, you stick with it and you keep moving forward, you're not really going to bump into any problems because there are many great players that play in standard tuning and they don't see it as a problem they don't see massive flaws but then there are people like tom or ann who play in the the fourth tuning and that brings benefits to their playing ultimately um, i think people that play on either side of the fence appreciate that there are inherent uh things that aren't ideal about their system doesn't mean that one's right doesn't mean that one's better than the other um certainly don't think for one second that because this is new and some good players are using it that you're going to hamper yourself by playing in standard tuning that's absolutely not the case but at the same time if you've learned to play in uh 
a different tuning like force or open e or whatever you know look at someone like derek trucks derek trucks just plays an open e and he does absolutely fine so pick whatever you want and stick to it Anyway, those are my thoughts. Thank you very much, Rodolfo, for the question. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, you can check me out on Patreon. Ah, there is a link to that in the description below. You can support me over there for as little as a dollar. It gets you exclusive access to my private Facebook group, where all of my patrons get together. We talk about all things music, and we do transcription challenges, and we get exclusive videos that don't go on YouTube and the like if you don't want to do that that is also fine drop me a comment below as i said earlier hit that like button hit that subscribe button and tell a friend about this channel because the bigger this channel gets the more time i can justify putting into it anyway it's been my pleasure to talk to you entertain and serve you and i will be back for another video soon peace out guys bye